Welcome back to another episode. I'm out here in a totally different woodland to be honest. Really, really nice deciduous forest. Mostly beach uh, with some silver birch and oak as well. <clears throat> and it is uh, a really nice time of year. It's about middle of October now, so for us here in England, that's coming into prime autumn time in about two weeks towards the end of October, the colours and the trees will be really, really nice. But I'm getting some real good autumn vibes from this camp. I'm using the uh, army surplus, the French F1 military surplus pup tent. Uh, it's a two-man tent, I think. First time ever using it. I got it secondhand online. Um, it's not the heavy old school canvas one. It's kind of that more modern, I think it's nylon material. But I'm interested to give it a go. It's really spacious compared to the Levu. Not on the height, but on the, the width inside. Not the not the sort of nicest when you set it up in terms of I like the shelter to be as tight as possible. It's really hard to get taut or tight. So maybe you guys out there who use that type of tent have some tips on uh, how to just kind of stretch that material. I've done it as best I can, but just sat here enjoying a coffee and roasting up some chestnuts. Look at these. Oh, they're almost ready actually. I just foraged those from. Uh, just over about 100 yards away from a sweet chestnut tree. Um, the nuts are quite small and they're not fully uh, kind of ripe as you'd say, but uh, those ones that have kind of white in them, I find are actually nice and sweet and the squirrels often get to those first. So I managed to, where we've had really strong winds this October so far, um, the, they've fallen quite early. So I managed to time it today where the winds were really strong this morning and I got in and I beat the squirrels to it. Got the fresh ones. So yeah, just gonna. This camp is all about enjoying using a new tent. I've got a wool blanket with me, mostly traditional gear, and just yeah, enjoying the woods and the forest this time of year is the best time of year for camping. So thanks for joining me, folks. Hope you enjoy the episode, and uh, yeah, let's get some good food on. So in terms of cooking setup. I'm just roasting the chestnuts in this small little skillet frying pan which is made by Alex Pohl, he's a UK blacksmith. Um, I made some medieval nails with him a while ago. He makes some really cool cookware as well. So I've got um, that and then the grill and this kind of setup here where you can hang multiple things from this metal stake is Trevor's, another UK blacksmith, TJM Metalworks. It's the mini fire anchor and I always, I gave it a go a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, um, and I just wanted to test it out with multiple things, and it's great because I can hang a billy can from kind of one side like that, and then I can grill from this side, and if I want to rotate and take something off the heat really easily, I can just swivel that round, and then hang the billy can off as well, and actually, if I swing that right round, it counteracts the weight and it keeps the billy nice and straight. And yeah, just a really, really nice cooking setup. Great for this time of year. Also got myself a fire reflector just to um, well protect the fire a little bit from the strong winds. That was to be honest what it was built for but it also keeps the fire burning nice and hot as well. Keeps all that heat there. This ground although peaty is absolutely soaking so I've cleared the leaves away as well. And I'm just using the cover of the tent as a sit pad. So this is the tent, apologies my uh, camera light's just gone out so it's going to start to get dark and I might have to run by phone light or head torch later but it's a fairly spacious tent. I've just got my wall blanket in there um, and it's, it's so spongy the leaf layer here where the underneath these beech trees that I don't need a sleeping pad. Um, it's just so soft underneath the tent so I'll lay on one side of the wall blanket and then wrap it over me um, like a burrito I guess. But yeah, it's, I'm, I'm impressed with the size and the space of it. Uh, but like I say, it's this tension in the middle. Can you see that sagging part? Even like that's what I'd like it to be. And every time I kind of pull it, like these rain flaps, I guess, this overhang is always not really very taut, just the way it's stitched. I'd prefer it to be a bit tighter, but 
The other thing is um, the metal clips that, that enable you to tighten the guy ropes. Uh, not amazing. I can tie knots, you know, I could do a taut guy line hitch or something, taut top hitch or a guy line hitch, and it would be a lot easier. But um, yeah, at the moment it's just getting it tight enough that if it does rain, which it's forecasted to, just trying to get stop that sagging so that the rain doesn't pull on it. It didn't come with any cordage on any of the sides. I had to put that all on myself. So whoever had it, because it's second hand, they just took it, I guess. Um, and the pegs, let me show you the pegs. This is the pegs. Arguably the most pathetic peg I've ever seen in my life. Now I don't know if this is meant to come with the tent, like a standard, but to me that's not a tent peg, that's a toothpick. I bet if I put it in the ground, Look, look at that. So yeah, I don't know if I got a bad deal when I ordered it online and the person has given me just the cheapest pegs they could, but easy enough, I can just make wood ones or get some good decent metal ones. But I was quite surprised when I received it that these were <laughs> supplied with a military surplus tent. <coughs> Chestnuts have, that's why you put the X in them, just so they split don't explode basically, they're still really hot, but if, once you peel that, it makes it easier to peel them as well. Look at this beauty. That is a beauty of a chestnut. These are going to be so much better than these kind of supermarket ones. So much sweeter. Because they're wild. And they're very fresh. So you just take that external shed off. And then that white fluffy inside is what you want, that's the good stuff. just indirectly cooking these, letting these heat up at the moment. The grill was already hot, so I'm just letting them warm up, let that flame burn down, and then I'm going to lower that grill just above the coals and give it a few minutes each side. These are lamb, lamb uh, steaks. A little bit too done, actually. Just season these simply with a bit of salt and pepper. Nothing too complicated. Well, they're definitely cooked. Looks pretty good to be fair. Let's give it a taste. I put a bit of oak down on the fire and uh, it was a little bit smoky, but I think that's actually helped with the taste of this lamb. It's a really nice smoky flavour. Mm, pleased with that. So, nice and roomy. Definitely a two person tent. Um, I'll show you a few more. There's not. It's a really basic tent, but I'll show you a few of the features tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that's the setup with the wall blanket. Like I say, double. So I just fold it over myself, and I'm all protected from the wind anyway because it all zips up. Uh, just got to hope no beech branches slam down in the night because they're known for breaking off huge limbs just randomly, even though they look really healthy. So I think you'd definitely be alright, even if you're six foot plus, because I've got at least probably a foot and a half behind me of space. Headroom is not, actually I can sit up, but my head does just about touch the top of the tent. I like it though, I like the style, I like the shape. I've not stayed in a pup tent before. They're really quite cheap and they're, they're widely available. But yeah, I was just saying about the beech trees and the branches, and I'm in a beech forest. They obviously drop their limbs uh, randomly, big, big branches. But I've made sure that where this tent is, there's no big overhanging ones. It essentially could be a widow maker. Just be wary of that, folks. If you're out in beech woodlands, as pretty as they are, and I love them, they, um, they're probably the best autumn woodland. They can be a little bit dangerous. 
Ooh. Beautiful evening. Well, it looks like there's some fabric. Not rips, but like, I don't know if it's mold or what, where the guys stored it for so long. It smells really musky. So maybe they stored it for a long time. Anyway, there's not much I'm gonna waffle on about tonight, folks. I don't really wanna waffle too much to the camera. So this is me. In terms of pillow, for those asking, I usually take, I've got three or four layers. I usually take this jacket layer off and use that as a pillow sometimes. Um, and like I say, I'm easily gonna be warm enough in the wool blanket. Temperature's dropping down to about um, 11 degrees, 12 degrees Celsius at night. So still warm um, for this time of year. Hence the wool blanket and not needing a mattress underneath. But thank you for watching folks, I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the morning. This is how I'd sleep. Just like that. Night night. Well, we've had plenty of rain overnight. Without doubt, this is the worst tent I've ever slept in in my life. Let me show you why. So at first glance, rain looks like it's running off and beading off the tent, no problem. Yeah, it's a little bit saggy, but there's no pooling of water. And then you look down here, I'm gonna boost the camera a bit. Look at that. See, when I touch under here, it's not really that wet, it's not wet, like just condensation wet. But this is coming through the zips somehow, I think. It's rained all night and I think it must be getting through either the zips or the seams around the zips somehow. But look at it, it's horrendous. Like, all around the edges, so maybe it's not just the zips. Look at this. Somehow I stayed mostly dry in the middle, but this is shocking. Look, in this corner, if I boost the settings, this is how bad it is, folks. There is water puddling in the corner of that tent. Absolutely shite tent. Excuse my language, but that, look! You can't really call that protective material. I was talking about the features yesterday, I was gonna talk about the features. This is a vent with a bit of Velcro. But the rain shouldn't be driven under there because of that rain fly, that little lip out there. So it's not coming in here. Or well, all of that is dry. So I can only think it's coming up through through the ground somehow. Or through these zips. I just look, there's more. Oh man. That is terrible. So I know that this is a two-part tent, I'm aware. And this is the rain fly. I know because it's a lot thicker material. <clears throat> this goes over the top. And maybe this is, well, I guess one, one person in the military would carry this, with the uh, outer section, and one would carry the inner section. It's a bit like the Polish Levy, where there's two sections of the tent. But it's like I said, <clears throat> this material is thick enough. The rain didn't come through. What I have noticed though, is here the guy is obviously the previous owner had a few leaks himself maybe and tried to tape up but i think it's either coming through the zips or the vent and i had a little quick look online a lot of people saying it comes through the zips and they are a leaky tent um obviously less so with this but uh, i figured where i was under the trees it wouldn't get as wet as it did lo and behold i was wrong
And there we go. Leave no trace. Temp is over there, you can see the dry patch. That'll soon get wet and blend in. Nice little spot though. Well, cheers for watching this uh, slightly damp overnight episode. I do appreciate it, always appreciate your views. Drop a comment if you've used that tent before or something similar. Um, I might try out, I think there's a canvas version. I think I'm going to give that one a go where it's sort of slightly more durable, I guess. Um, yeah, in hindsight, putting the rainfly on would have been a better idea given that I thought there was loads of cover. But um, like I said, I think it either came up from the ground or in through the zip somehow. We had quite a bit of rain in the night. Um, but I just don't think it's that good a quality of tent. It is cheap. It was only, I don't know, 30 quid or something I got it for. So it wasn't expensive um, and it was used as well. So maybe there were some seals. I probably should have done the old set up a home test. But sometimes you've got to test yourself and um, get out there and try try things. Uh, you know, I wasn't in the, I'm not in the wilderness. Um, I'm just on a sort of small woodland patch that I, I do know. So it is what it is. Unfortunately, it's a leaky tent. But thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And um, I'll catch up with you guys next week. See you then.